Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau, and today I want to talk to you about generator functions in Python. So what is a generator function? A generator function is a function that can suspend and resume. So it's different from regular functions that can return a value and are then finished. Uh, and in contrast, a generator function can return or yield, as it is called for generator functions, a value, and then pick up where it left off to yield another value and another value and another value. So in a sense, a generator function is a way to generate a list of uh, elements uh, on the fly. And we will, use, uh, a very, we will use generators to implement a very simple uh, cat and mouse game world that I've prepared. So I made a game world module um, from game world import uh, animal. So our game world consists of animals, two animals, one cat, one mouse and a function draw grid that actually renders the grid uh, to the terminal. And you will see that that's, I think, pretty cool. You can print emoji to the terminal, allowing us to have a nicely animated cat and a mouse. So very basically, it works like this. Cat is an animal, row is two, call is two. So I define the cat to be at position two comma two. And the mouse is also an animal, uh, but it's at position seven comma seven. And then we draw the grid cat, call my mouse, up. I save it, switch to the terminal, I can now execute it, python3 generators.py, and you will see that it works. We have a nice uh, game world with the, in the top left the cat and in the bottom right the mouse. Now, of course, this is not a proper, uh, proper game, it's not animated, so we need to animate it in one form or another. So how can we do that? Let's first start without any functions, simply by defining a list of cats and this list will contain animals that together make up the trajectory of the cat. So what we're going to do is, for example, the following cats is a list. And then we say, OK, we want to animate the cat so that it goes from position 2,2 2 to position 7,7, 7, right? So it will catch the mouse. So we say for i in range starting from 2 until 8, right? So up until and including 7. And then we add to the cats list, we add an animal at row i and also column i. And now we need to, uh, rather than simply call draw grid once, what we do is we say for cat in cats, draw the grid. Now, of course, this will go too fast for us to see. So we need to introduce some delay. So we can say time.sleep. 0.4, so wait for 400 milliseconds after every draw of the grid. Import the time module, save it. And if I execute it now, you will see that the, the cat will be animated. It will catch the mouse. Up. Tuk, 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 tuk. And it will catch the mouse and be a smiley cat. Okay, so far so good, right? So very simple. We have animated our, our game world by creating a list of cat objects and we loop through that list and that's what generates the, uh, the animation. Now, what we can do instead, um, a very minor change, is introduce a function, just a regular function, not a, not a generator function, just a regular function that defines our list of, uh, of cats. So I'll call that function cats, def cats. Um, inside the function, I will no longer call the list cats because then we will get confusion between the name of the function and, uh, and the list. So I will call it L. Up, return L. Um, so now we have a function cats, and if we call it, what we get is a list of animals that make up the trajectory of the cat. Now we can no longer directly loop through our cats, right? Because cats is not a list. Rather, it is a function that we need to execute, and then a return value of that function is a list that we can loop through. Um, so let's execute it. Up, see that it still works. Yes, it does. Okay. So nothing special here, right? We just gen created a function, a normal function that returns a list of cats. Uh, and, and we loop through the return value of that, uh, of that function. Now we can turn this into a generator function really easily while actually simplifying our code. So the generator function that I have in mind does not build a list of cats. Rather what it does, it, it generates one cat at a time and then yields that, returns that. And then it will resume where it left off and will yield another cat and another cat, etc. So we can remove this line. We can remove the return statement. And instead of appending the animal to the list, I say yield. 
So what this means is that the first time i will be one and we create an animal at position two comma two, it will be yielded. And what that will mean is that this the yielded animal is the first element of our iteration. Then we draw the grid, we sleep for 400 milliseconds and then cats picks up where it left off. I will now be three. We generate an animal at position three comma three that will be yielded and it will correspond to the second element of our for loop. And we draw the grid again, we sleep for 400 milliseconds, then cats picks up where it left off, etc., etc., etc. In other words, we're still in a sense generating a list of cats, but now we're doing it on the fly. We're doing it every, so every time with every new iteration of our for loop, we're generating a new animal. And when does the for loop end? Well, it ends when uh, this for loop ends and our cats function has no long, nothing to yield anymore, it will end and that will mean that our for loop will end as well. Now, if I execute that, you will see that actually still nothing has changed. It still works in exactly the same way or it still, it looks, behaves in exactly the same way. Okay. So this is, now we've written our first generator and you see it's really, really simple. We can also uh, animate our mouse in the same way by implementing a generator function that animates uh, the mouse. So uh, let's remove this mouse and say up oh, dev mice. And how do we want to animate the mouse? Well, let's have the mouse move sideways to avoid the cat. So it will stay at row seven, but it will move sideways uh, to position uh, two, to column two. So I say four I in range. Where do we start? Well, we start at column seven. We move towards column two. So we do a range from seven to one in steps of minus one, right? So this minus one here means the step size. If that is negative in a range, it will mean that we are actually decrementing the value. Oh, for I in range. Uh, and then we do the same thing, yield animal or almost the same thing. Row is seven, right? So the mouse stays at position seven. Uh, but the column will correspond to I. Okay, so how can we actually now get, what we now want to do is loop through the return value or loop through our mice and cats generators at the same time. How can we do that? Well, we can do that in exactly the same way that we can do that for any, for example, for two lists, namely using zip. So we can say for cat comma mice in zip cats comma mice. So what does zip do? If you're not familiar with zip, it's a very powerful function when working with any kind of list-like object, including generators, but also lists, sets, diction, dictionaries, etc. It takes the first element from cats, so the first animal that is yielded by cats, pairs it with the first element that is yielded by mice, and that will then be assigned to cat in the case of cats and mice in the, oh, mouse, this should be mouse, mouse in the case of mice. And then it will move on to the second, element that is return, yielded by cats that will be assigned to cat. The second element that is yielded by mice will be assigned to mouse, etc. In other words, it's a way to sort of in parallel, in a pairwise fashion, uh, walk through multiple iterables at the same time. Okay, now let's see that this works. So I switch and I run it and now you see, uh, now actually the cat and the mouse, they're moving in parallel together and the cat is indeed evading the mouse. Um, very simple, right? Semantically, this is very simple. Now, I think it's also easy to understand how this works. What is not obvious, I think, if you execute this code, is that our cats and our mice functions, generator functions, are actually running in alternation. And to make this uh, clearer, I will actually uh, comment out this, the grid, and simply add a pass. And then here, let's add a print statement to illustrate when uh, when what happens. So print uh, mice comma i and here in the cats I say print cats also comma i um, and now execute it. So what you now see is this resume suspend cycle that I was talking about. So first cats uh, is called and we yield the animal at position 2 comma 2. Then mice is called, and what we do is we yield the animal at position seven comma seven, right? Column seven. Then actually we switch back to our cats function, and it yields a cat at position three comma three. 
And then we the cat's function suspends again. We switch back to our mice function and it yields an animal, a mouse, at position 7,6, right? The 7 stays fixed, etc. So the, the mice and the cat's functions are being executed in parallel and that the yield statement is what allows these functions to do that. Um, so this is basically, and when you use generators in this way that they run in parallel, it's often called coroutines. And in fact, the whole async uh, await functionality that is built into uh, Python 3.6 and higher is built on top of this, uh, this principle. Okay, now, so now we've seen basic uh, generator functions. Um, in the next video, I will make this example a little bit more exciting and a little bit more interactive by having the, the, the cat and the mouse actually communicate with each other so that we can have an, uh, a situation where the cat is actively pursuing the mouse and the mouse is actively avoiding the cat. Again, using generator functions. Thank you very much.